realization to her, his fusion with her. I mean, it's like he just had to drag her to the car. And, and then, you know, what happens, happens. And there's a, a third character who shows up in, in text communications, but never in the flesh. And I feel like that character has to have the agency to come and, and involve himself because of his interests in, in, in relation to that female character. I, th I feel like there's a huge potential there to expand it, man. And, uh, but yeah, I, I invited Jasper, uh, you know, to come on for when Drew Stepik uh, of Godless.com comes on here in a, in a little while. It's supposed to be he's supposed to be coming on at nine thirty, and I thought, you know, since Jasper is pretty, you know, knee deep in publishing himself, uh, maybe you know he could have a nice, uh, what's the word, a uh, conflap conversation debate, um, a con what conflap. Confab, confabulation, yes. Yes, that's it. That's it exactly. Well, how have you been? Discussions. These are words with a D this time. Now, who is this? Oh. Drew. Drew! Hi, Drew. Hey, Drew. Hey, welcome. You have written one of the most awesome vampire uh, series that I have ever read, aside from Church Mouse. That's pretty awesome. Thanks, man. Hey, can you hear me? I don't want to do a hot mic, but... Oh, you sound totally fine. Yeah. yeah, we can. yeah. Hey, hey, Regina. How is it going, Drew? Thank you so much for coming on the show. Oh, absolutely. You know, we're, also, I... we're also joined by uh, Jasper Bark of Crystal Lake Publishing. And, uh, you know, I, I figured, you know, it'd be a great meeting of the minds, you know? Mm -hmm. Hey, Jasper, I just posted uh, about hey, 30 of your books on uh, Godless <laughs> three days ago. Hey, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, Which appreciate uh, it. Yeah, I'm working with Joe over at Crystal Lake, and uh, I'm putting up all his titles. It's He's a really awesome dude. He and is so, a totally excellent individual. Yeah. Um, you don't get many people of his caliber. I mean, and when I say caliber, I don't mean um, his skills and his talents, which are very much in evidence. I'm talking about character in terms of his personality, the sort of person he is, his moral fiber. You don't get many people as excellent as him in the world of publishing, unfortunately. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of one of those weird things. I, I, I've, I've met a lot of these guys who are publishers, and all of them seem really rad. Like, a my, my publisher is Bloodbound, so I, Mark and Joe are just like yeah, the great. nicest dudes in the world. And uh, jo, Joe's been great from Crystal Lake, and Jared Barbie's been really cool. You know, I, I brought a lot of people in uh, to Godless as essentially like partner publishers, mm -hmm. and I just put all their work up. And if, you know, stuff's in KDP Direct or anything like that, or KDP Select, I'll just link out to Amazon and hope that they'll give me throw me some titles. But I mean, everyone's really excited about it, and everyone's being really cool because it's an opportunity to do something different, right? You know, people feel that they're being sensitive a lot, and so. Well, it's awesome to meet you, Jasper. And you too. And um, yeah, it was just um, only a few days ago I was exchanging messages with Joe all about this and what you're doing and how excited he is to be involved with it. Yeah, I, I I can't wait. It's gonna I'm gonna launch next Sunday at midnight, which mm -hmm. is technically Monday, but it's gonna be fuck. I got so much shit to do. <laughs> I you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm posting the uh, right now. I'm I'm posting all the titles from like the non-partner publishers, mm -hmm. and you know. Someone like Necro and Eraser Ahead and these guys, they've got like a zillion fucking titles. So, oh, I man, mean, but they've got a zillion yeah. excellent titles. I mean, yeah. the difference there must be just um, making certain you don't leave out something seriously awesome. Yeah, uh, but it, it's it's going to be a lot of work. But you know what? I, I set myself up for this, so I got to follow through. <laughs> yeah, and do you know what? It's going to be a lot of work, but the rewards are going to be huge. The personal yeah, and oh, were you going to say something, Regina? And the sense of the you know people such as yourselves who are seriously giving something back to the community that nurtures them. 
Yeah, I, I think that's a whole point. And, and that's why I get kind of confused. I mean, I, I get it when people like really kind of second guess what I'm doing and think that I'm out to steal their IP or rip them off or any shit like that. What I'm trying to do here is create a platform specifically for indie horror authors. Mm -hmm. And it's a platform that's gonna work as uh, an MCN, which is a multi-channel network, where I'm gonna try and turn the horror voices of today into social influencers. So I think it's important that people kind of get about that and, and figure out what I'm trying to do here. And it's all about amplification. And we've got a really strong platform. We've mm -hmm. got an amazingly strong community where if everyone pulls together, it's, it, it's going to benefit everyone. I, I don't, I don't want to steal anyone's fucking work, dude. It, it's not about saying each other's work. We're not in competition. We're all readers and we're all writers. Yep. Um, we're all potential supporters of each other. Um, exactly. The, the key words you were saying was amplification. One voice amplifies another yep. and then another and extends that, that kind of feed like a ripple out throughout the whole community. We've yeah. all got people in touch, you know, and then um, the more good people that we recommend, uh, the, the more trust we build up between each other and, and the more excitement. There is nothing better than, than putting down a novel and going, man, I've got to talk about this with someone. I've got to share this with someone. Yep. Or the excitement you get when you recommend something to somebody because you know this will be so up their street. And, and they get back to you and say, I hey, thank you so much. That was awesome. Yeah, it, 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 it's all about... Well, we, we get such a tight, uh, tight knit community yeah. that if we actually like, bring ourselves together and help each other out, like, like I, I'm trying to help these young guys, like Daniel Volte. I can't pronounce his I name. Know, yeah, he's a cool dude. Daniel and, J. Yeah, Daniel J. And, 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 and Simon McCarty, who I fucking love this guy. He's, he's so great. He's he's given he's, me like all these dead. exclusives because he can't he can't put his work anywhere, you mm -hmm. know. So he's looking to me to help us get his work out there. So I just think that's a big deal. It's a yeah. it's a big deal to him, and it's a bigger deal to me that he's kind of trusting me with his work, you know. And and I, I really admire. Him. And you know, being an indie horror author myself, it, it's it's like. I know how hard it is. Jasper, I know you know how hard it is. It's it's the, the we don't have we don't have anything like this. We've got the community, the community pulls together, but we don't have any way to like distribute and talk and you know tell our friends about our community and shit like that. You know? Um yeah. so, so Drew, uh do you have a submission uh uh like call yet or how are you gonna handle bringing in new recruits because in this room right now i can already recommend uh, three or four that that would be that might be perfect for your operation if they're allowed to let their imaginations just run wild under your umbrella of publishing yeah, yeah it, it's. I'm not really doing publishing. I'm, I'm doing certain publishing thing. Under okay. the Godless Press moniker, essentially what I'm doing is publishing books like this uh, series I'm going to have called Mix 66. And what it is, is you take a single author every month, take six pieces of work, throw it in a book, and deliver it and sell it for 50 cents. Like a and demo tape. Which yeah, is it's, it's a mixtape. Yeah, and, that's a really good um, analogy. And I, I think that uh, a couple other things that I'm going to do with Godless Press, I'm doing this thing it's going to call uh, like uh, Bloody Splits, which are going to be like if Jasper and I, I'll, I'll take a look at like a chapter of one of Jasper's stories and he'll look at one of mine and we'll rewrite each of those chapters from our points of view. It's like a, it's like a punk rock uh, split cassette, right? You know, where like Noah Flax paid like uh, all Rancid's music and Rancid played all Noah Flax's music. So that's another thing that I'm going to do. What and an I'm, idea. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, so obviously. Always too far. And your headphones. 
sorry. It's it's all right, then. Um, so I have a very never mind. <laughs> and in her endless adventures. <laughs> um, so obviously there was a need for for this because so many authors are experiencing censorship of a very unreasonable, untenable um, quality. You know, uh, for the for for really strange infractions. Um, and Simon McCarty, I believe he's he suffered from Amazon's like. Uh, umbrella parenting more than anybody, you know. So it's good that you've you've uh, provided him a platform. But uh, so you say you're not running a submission call, like no, no. How, how will you determine who who you will work with? How do you oh, determine? And, and any anyone who sends an email and asks for more information and wants to be involved in the site to creators at godless.com, they're they're in. I'll I'll, I'll distribute anything. Uh, I mean, I, I'm not going to distribute anything racist. <laughs> I, I, I come from a mixed family. So well, now, wait like, a minute, though. Moonface, isn't that a pejorative of, of racial? And, I, you know, I, I just, I don't know. Is it? That's not what it's about. No. It's not what it's about. Okay. But, it's, but, a, it's a joke, basically. It's, it's more of a joke, right? The, the title... I, I, I've read the book and it doesn't refer to anything. It's about a smallpox victim. Okay. Yeah. So that's just the nickname. So that's like so the guy literally face. has a moon shaped face, right? Or is that. that no, it's because like of the craters in his face. Pock yeah. crater face. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. But, um, but a, I, to, to answer your question, any any of you guys on here, Regina especially, send me your stuff, dude, and I and I'll I'll put it up. I'll try and get it up before yeah. launch. I, I think I think that people don't really understand like the, the the purpose of the platform right out of the gate. So it's better to as in writing to show not tell. Go to the site, use a password, check it out, and see what it see what's going on, right and and see like how I'm kind of like developing this to build up something big that's specific and laser focused on the indie horror community. You know, and, and, and be beyond the fact that people are getting censored a lot, they're getting freaking raped from their royal royalties. And, and, and I just don't think that's cool. I granted I'm, I'm going to take 10% because I'm doing a lot of fucking work. Right. But it's like, you know, that's that's nothing compared to what Amazon's doing. I was going to yeah. say 70, 80 percent Amazon's taking. That, yeah. That's a tiny, tiny and, amount. And, and, and that's I, I, percent of what they Amazon leaves us at the end of it all. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 building. I'm going to build uh, featured author videos. I'm going to do uh, horror authors react to horror movies. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna do all this shit on YouTube. I actually wanted to talk to you guys and see if you guys would do a condensed version of this show every Sunday, like a half hour version, and I'll put a shelf on Godless, and you guys can be like an official kind of like podcast sponsor. I, I don't know if you'd want to yeah. do it. But I'd I mean, awesome. Yeah, uh, yeah that with me after the show. I'd I'd love. To, yeah, tell me exactly what you want, and uh, so you want to condense down to what the 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 best of 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 each week or the parts where we talk about an up and coming author or what or no just do like a half hour before, maybe like a pre-game show okay uh, oh, okay. Where, you, where you guys just talk about indie literature horror that's you know that, that that's all i want Who they, counts? I, I'm, I'm trying to give it all these opportunities together for people to really break out like i made my featured author video and you know you, you can you can look at this because I made a joke at the beginning of it. And I'm kind of like I'm the first featured author on Godless because I own the fucking Godless, right? But I mean that that's kind of the point. I, if, if I believe in the platform and I'm putting up all my shit on there exclusively, and I've got buy-in from my publisher, it's it's like you have to understand that if I'm going to use it, then it's okay for you to use it. And I'm going to bust my ass to make sure that I get you as much promotion and visibility as you can possibly get. I'm, I'm, I'm bending over backwards, quote unquote, 
for Simon and Daniel because I just think they're fucking awesome. You know, they 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 were early adopters. They're super cool, and you know, it's like so. Do you need me to take a pass at your cover art? Do you need me to relay out your ebook? You know, and and I'm doing that for them, and I'm not going to do that for everybody, obviously, but. I, I, I want people to know that I'm, I'm sincerely here to make this something that is going to really boost the community and really kind of take it to another level. I hope, you know, it's risky no matter what, but I believe in it and I'm so, putting all my shit on there. So Ben and Regina, Neil and Thomas, I think all of you guys could benefit from this because uh, you're not censorship happy like Amazon, correct, Drew? Yeah. I mean, all you guys, seriously, when you get done tonight with this, send an email to uh, a creator, the creators at godless.com, and, and, and tell me what you're interested in. Uh, I'll send you over an agreement tomorrow morning it is as soon as I can get it done. Right. I, 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 I want to support you. Regina, I, I, I love your shit, dude. I, I, oh, I thank you. Oh, that's very, very kind. Thank you. I, I really, I've got a couple of stories that I would be interested in writing and, and putting on your platform at some point in the future, but I am just like, so, We'll see. I'll, I'm going to have some time coming up here soon, maybe. So we'll see what I can do. We'll talk. We'll talk. Perfect. My people will call yeah, you definitely. your people. And by that, I mean the voices in my head will write out a letter and send it to you. So thank you. Ben, Sorry. I'll definitely get a hold of you as soon as I can. Ben, have you experienced any censorship yet with your stuff? Not yet. I haven't uh, really put enough out to experience that, but I can see it happening. Yeah. Um, sorry, sorry. I keep rubbing my nose. I got sick this week. Right. Yesterday, I, yesterday, COVID test, and uh, thankfully, uh, negative. But I mean, I, if you guys didn't know, LA is a fucking nightmare right now. It's like super dangerous. Uh, not only because of COVID, it's because people are desperate, and they're. I, I've got the uh, Citizen app on my phone. And it's blowing up constantly. People get stabbed and chased with machetes oh, and shit like that. So it's just, it's fucking crazy. And, uh, and so in your microphone again, Ann. I was just going to say, and you're over there in Palm Springs. It's probably not much better there. He's talking about LA being really dangerous right now. Uh, you have. Yeah, yeah. I, I, could, I could hear him. It was. Just my interfering with the plug. She's robotic. Ah, oh, fuck. Hey, Thomas. Uh, thanks for okay. Thanks for coming. Hey, good night, Thomas. Thank you. For and uh, you're welcome back anytime. And I definitely think Thomas that you should get in touch with Drew because I will yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Your, your covers alone are are such high art to me. I mean, you know, that's what drew me into reading Bound by Rights. And so I think you could benefit um, out of anyone here the most uh, working with this. You know, I think so, too. I'm, I'm very interested. I'll be in touch. Thanks for coming back. And, uh, you know, if you anytime you want to come back, you know, I'll throw out a link. So sweet. Appreciate it. Thanks, y'all. Have a good night. Good night. Have a good night. Uh, thanks for coming. Thank you. So so Drew. Um, uh, do you still do work with that, uh, with the charity? What is it? Children of the night. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of wanted to bake this and do it when I, when I launched Godless last year, it was a clothing company and it was out to support, uh, children of the night and kind of like fighting child prostitution and, uh, teen prostitution and the exploitation of human trafficking and all these things, because all my books are tied to that. So there's a, an element of abuse in all my books. So I've always kind of supported Children of the Night. So I started this clothing company last year and I launched it two weeks before a fucking lockdown happened. And then I felt really bad about fucking pimping clothes that are perceived as satanic 
on people during a time when they're looking for anything to believe in, right? So, you know, it got it got to around October, and I started writing again. I walk uh, a half mar a half marathon every morning, so. I was writing while I was walking because I'm going to burn over three hours every morning walking. Why not write? Right. That was the thought. So I wrote a bunch of shit and I managed to give myself a sciatica from being bent over. So I totally fucked up my leg. And uh, then I sent over all this work to uh, my publisher, uh, Mark Chicarone at uh, Bowdown Books. And I said, would you be interested in doing something like this? I, I, sent, I sent those uh, new stories over to you. It's called Fucking Scumbags, Burn in Hell. Yeah, I read the first one. It's, 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 it, they're like self-contained, like Twilight Zone type things, right? Is that Yeah. It? I got to read the and, first one. Yeah. So I wanted to do a novelette series uh, based on this, this kind of theme of all this, these topical things happening to people and then going to hell. And so I talked to Mark about it. He said that they thought I would be interested in doing it. And I said, can we sell 25 cents a piece? And he said, you can't do that on Amazon. So me giving myself a sciatica gave me the idea to turn Godless from a clothing company into a indie horror distribution platform where I can sell for whatever I want. Uh, I, I, I cannot censor myself or worry about being censored, and I can just write fucking really hardcore shit and sell it however and forever, whatever I want it to be. So that's kind of where it came from. I actually started out when I was my walking. I wrote a 500-page diet book called uh, The Satanic Diet, and essentially what that is is the conceit is it's a really hard diet. Like I said, I walk like... 20 miles a day, and I don't eat any bread, I don't eat rice, I don't really drink that much anymore, and I'm an alcoholic. And, uh, you know, I wrote this weird book, and the conceit is that if you sell your soul to the devil, you'll succeed in this diet. Because all other diets are like, uh, there's no consequences. You know, on January 1st, you can say, I'm going to do a diet. And then three days later, you're fucking done with it. If you know you're going to hell, dude, you're going to want to live longer, right? So you're going to want to lose weight. So that's a good, leave a good looking corpse. <laughs> <laughs> so that was that. And then, then, I, then I started getting into the, uh, the fucking scumbags burn in hell. And because Jason Hill had read that first one that you read, uh, A Little Bit Country, a couple months ago on Chilling Tales. And uh, I'm like, I got all these stories in my head, man. I can really rope them into this. So I did that. And that's kind of the birth of Godless 2.0, which we're talking about. You mentioned that um, one of your central themes is abuse um, and trying to counter abuse of children. Is there a personal investment in that topic? Uh, yeah. Personal um, connection. My... My first book, which came out on 666, was uh, Godless. That's how I own godless.com. I'm sorry. Sorry, it sounds like I'm drunk, but I'm just getting this weird reverb from my uh, mic. Yeah, no, you sound fine from what I'm saying. Um, so my first book was a semi-autobiographical autobiographical book. Uh, it was about me. I spent a year in the hospital for uh, an eating disorder. Uh, I was bulimic in college, yeah. and uh, I dealt with that. And I, and I also have been a drug abuser, and I'm a fucking alky. Um, so I, I kind of took that further because it was all about sexual abuse, that, that book, even though it wasn't a horror book. And then when I kind of moved into Knuckle Supper, which is probably what I'm best known for, which are these vampires who are heroin addicts, who use humans as uh, paraphernalia for their warm blood. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of took that further and I introduced like a, a teenage prostitute character to it and do it. And someone turned me on the shoulder of the night. So I've, I got this ongoing theme of abuse, you know, whether, whether it's drug abuse, sexual abuse, uh, you know, verbal abuse, 
it's it's just it's something that I've always kind of built my stories around. Uh, I think it's important. Uh, I think I think that it makes my work uh, kind of topical and more interesting than just writing a book about a bunch of hair on X, right? So yeah, I agree. I think that's also one of the really key things that horror does. Horror is actually about all of us. Um, exploring, admitting to, and, and I'm really getting to grips with the darker side of our natures, the parts yep. of us that we're maybe not massively proud of, the, the 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 things that which if we don't accept them, if we don't look them straight in the eye, are going to take over us, uh, dominate us, and basically destroy our lives. And fiction is a place we play with this. It's where we explore it. It allows us to dance with this darker side of our nature um so the more that we as as authors as creators working in this field admit that we have these dark sides and actually explore those dark sides and bear ourselves a little bit the more we allow other people to explore that part of themselves and that's generally why the majority of people i know in the horror community are really quite um contrary to popular belief i think a lot of people think we're somewhat deranged and slightly depressed individuals most people I know in horror are actually really quite sanguine, very happy, very friendly, open in giving individuals. I think it's because we've got a place to put our demons, a place to explore and play with them. I think you're hitting it like right in the nose. I, I, that's exactly what it is, right? And yeah. people, critis, pretty, people criticize horror a lot and horror authors because they say, yeah, they, oh, this is horrible you? shit. It's yeah. Like, Look at the fucking world, man. It's horrible shit. I was a, uh, a before I was a, a writer, I was a guitarist in a mm -hmm. death metal band uh, for several years. And there is a similar sort of feeling mm -hmm. around people who play extreme music uh, that they, they must be, you know, deranged or fucked up in some way. But uh, they are they are some of the most chill individuals you will ever meet. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's not as much a misunderstanding is it's not looking deep enough into it. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone reads one of my books and their takeaway is that this is about freaking junkies and shit like that, that's not what it's about at all. You know, it's, and, and I'm sure Neil and Jasper, I'm, I'm sure both you guys have the same experiences. You want to put depth <laughs> in your work and you really want to drag people into it. And if you have to fucking smack someone in the face to, to get your message across, <laughs> What's what's a better medium to get that done than writing? What's a better place to put all that violent, all that violent emotion? Yeah, otherwise it's going to be bubbling up inside us. Otherwise it's going to be toxic. And extreme music is another perfect example. Um, it generally leaves me feeling, as you say, totally chill and really, really happy. I mean, I know a lot of kind of people wander into my study and it's blaring out speakers, and most of them can't even you know determine a tune in it. But for me, it's it's like it's lifting something off my soul, like a weight. It leaves me kind of feeling like happy and quite joyous and ecstatic. Yeah. Same with really good horror. Yeah, I, I, I feel the same way about both. It's like it boosts me inside, right? Yeah. It's like yeah. I, I've, I've been like the biggest skinny puppy fan forever. I know that's not extreme metal or anything like that. but I don't know. They're pretty extreme, but they're worse. Yeah. I, I mean – they're my favorite band of all time. And I also like a lot of punk rock. I also like a lot of metal, but it's like, it makes me, it gives me this certain feeling. It's like, it's boosting my endorphins and making me yeah. feel good. You know, and that's the same way. That's the same way I feel when I read a great fucking horror story. It's like, damn, you're, yeah. you're like, you're like, how did they beat me to the punch on this? Right. This is so fucking good. Cathartic. You know? It's cath uh, all of this stuff is cathartic. Yeah, you, know? like, exactly. you get to you get to deal with heavy things like death and suffering and torture and punishment and vices and just all kinds of people's all kind all kinds of personal dark sides and uh, you know secrets and uh, it, all of that stuff is very cathartic and uh, you know it's better to to experience it vicariously. <clears throat> like seriously then out here in the real world like like what you're you guys uh, were talking about a minute ago and um 
I, I, there's it's like a who's who on there. Uh, I'm looking through here, and uh, I mean, I see John Wayne, Kaminal, uh Let's see, Christopher Tri, Tri- Triana. Uh, yeah, that's my boy. That's the coolest guy in horror, man. All yeah, the splatter westerns and Kevin Sweeney, who I thought he had just stopped. But, uh, yeah, no, he's got a lot of shit. And John Bruni has got one on here that I have i didn't even know existed. Um, what is this? Is this just you, like, hyping them up? Is that what it is? Because some of them link back to Amazon. Is that what that is? Yeah, well, there's kind of two different ways publishers can go about this. Mm. Uh, it, there, well, obviously, I really want to focus on the self-pub end and the really indie authors who've got no outlet the Simons of the world and the Daniels of the world um, because I want to help them. Um, but I need to build a library. So that's why I would reach out to people like Joe uh, and, you know, Jared Barbie and these other publishers and say, look, I'll, I'll put your entire, all your titles up on this site and I'll link out to Amazon. And you can see how it goes. And if you want to give me titles for direct digital delivery, fine. You know, so I'm building a lot around like these publishers, just titles and just to get them up there to kind of like stabilize the community and make it robust. Right. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the hope is that more and more people will give me, uh, Titles will be direct delivery and exclusive titles, which I've got a bunch at launch. Mm -hmm. And Joe gave me, uh, Joe from Crystal Lake gave me a, a, a handful of titles to kind of test the water out. So same same thing with Bloodbound. Bloodbound Books is giving me, you know, obviously my titles, but a bunch of their other titles that they are pulling from KDP Select because, you know, I think that a lot of people are figuring it out that KDP select select sounds really great on paper, but the royalties just aren't really fucking there. And it's essentially you're selling your soul to Amazon. So, I mean, it's like, why not try something new? Mm. You know, 90, 90% is a good reason to try something new. All we got to do is come to community, uh, come together as a community and kind of like help each other. Right. That that's that's how we that's how we beat the beast. No, well, that's um. You mentioned punk rock. That's the punk. That's the beautiful legacy of punk rock for us as creators. Yep. We are being shafted by Amazon, whichever way we turn. We can't get around that, um, and that's not going to to ease off. That's only going to continue. They're a beer moth. They're part of the fang, the F A A N G, that are driving the entire world economy. They're just going to keep crushing us. Yeah. Um, our only resistance is to go local, to go small, to work with the people who are actually already buying our books and to build an alternative. Yeah. To do it ourselves. Yeah. And look after each other, as you said. I, I, I think that's the most important thing to think about here. And, and look yeah. after the people who read our books as well. Give them real value too. Yeah. I, I mean, because there's nothing like this, there's a need for it. Yeah, be, be because of the fact that people feel so fucking shit on that a lot of people are just going to quit writing because they, it's it's like I can't distribute this anywhere. I what's the point? I'm going to sell it on my own website. You know, social media can only do so much for you, but social media amplified by the entire horror community is going to do fucking wonders for all of us. Yeah. You know. When does uh, Moonface release? Moonface comes out on, on release or uh, on launch. So that's the 15th, next Monday. And that's just, that's the same day that uh, Simon promised me that uh, Gob and Knob will be done too. <laughs> and I've got uh, a, a couple other exclusives. I got one from BJ Swan. I think it's called The Second Wolf. That's a great uh, cover, yeah. Uh. I got... One from Kevin Dubois. Yes, yeah. <laughs> uh, I just got one from D and T, which is uh, Daniel Volpe's Volp. You know what? I, whenever I see his name, I think of Valdo in a Soul Caliber series. 
<laughs> oh, the mute uh, guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Valdo. I'm going to start calling him Valdo. Um, so I've got something from D&T. It's called Nana. The name of the author is... Um, Mark Taus. Yes. Mark Taus. And i gotta, just got to... I'm really some, awesome. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm really excited. And I also really appreciate that the the community is supporting this, right? You know, you you kind of feel like you're going into like uncharted territory when you kind of approach people and say, would you be interested in doing this? You know, especially since I only started doing it like beginning of January. So I've been working my ass off trying to get this done. I own a marketing agency too. So, I mean, it's like, you know, I got to bide my time being sick and cool. Um. I've got to ask, uh, because I, like I said, I read both of the the R.J. Reynolds, uh, the, na the name of the main character in them is R.J. Reynolds, so people know what I'm talking about, but um, uh, the vampire books, the uh, Knuckle Supper and Knuckle Bald, um, in one of those, I, I don't know if it's the, the pretty boy vampire who had the exaggerated Twilight-like story to reel in, you know, uh, girls or what, but... Um, one of them, like, smoke, like, a guy's heroin-induced blood through a bong or something and get high. No, and that was the, wasn't the, the Rasta vampires were smoking a bong through, like, a human mouth stuffed with pot nuggets, and then they had a bong that, like, jammed into the skull. That was great. I loved that scene. Is that what it was, Drew? Is that what it was? I think you're thinking about Eldritch, who is the kind of a uh, flamboyant gothic character. Yeah. He's uh, like RJ's ally, kind of. I don't want to ruin anything. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Don't tell me there's a betrayal coming. It's... He's, he's got a, um, in the first book, he's got that body and he's sucking heroin out of it, like hook, hookah. So it's just been, you know. They, they they tell people that they can turn them into vampires, right? And it's just all bullshit because they can't. Yeah, I can't. I guess you know, for for to be sensitive to those who don't who want to learn it and learn about it themselves, read it read it themselves. I can't go into this too much, but I almost struggled to understand how they are vampires, but also kind of not. Um, and it has to do with a certain, you know, organization and something that happened in the eighties and, you know, and I don't, I, I, I can't go any further with a description, but uh, I, I gotta say, I'm a little stumped. I almost feel like maybe uh, RJ and uh, the Cobra guy were, are, were being lied to or not given the full story in that at the end of okay. that. Way. Man, that's uh, sucking the, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to ruin the Knuckler, yeah. which is the next book. Yeah, but you're you're following pretty closely. Okay, I mean, there's there's a there's a lot more going on. That's a badass um, series, though, and uh, I love the tribalism of it. How there are all these different factions, and uh, most of them are are on their way out. They're dying, right? Um, because none of these alleged you know, so quote unquote vampires are all that healthy. You know, they're like. They're like what I think of when I look at a possum. They're like scavengers. They're like beneath scavengers, right? I mean, is that yeah, possums are beautiful creatures? Don't besmirch possums. Yeah, they really are really cute. cute. They're them. really cute. Yeah, they're Man, adorable. We were talking they, earlier about the the zeitgeist. That scene that you were talking about, where where they were drinking uh, hero, someone you know, a heroin junkie's blood to get high. When yeah. I had when I had typhus in 2019. One of the worst hallucinations that I had during my coma was I was in Chinatown and this like famous prostitute had been shot and her blood was flowing everywhere and everybody knew she was a coke addict. So everybody in Chinatown and basically every scumbag, including me from all over Chicago, was gathering around this pool of blood and just lapping it up off the dirty ground because it was yeah. so full of cocaine. That's crazy. That, 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 that sounds exactly like my books. Wow. Mm. 
That's you're weird. onto something. When, uh, yeah, wild symbolism. When does Knuckler release, uh, Drew? Do you have it's, a firm date? As soon as I get off my ass and finish it. Okay. I um, can tell you, spoiler, it, it takes place in Mexico. Uh, essentially, it's um, Escape from New York meets Five Deadly Venoms. Meets what? Five Deadly Venoms. You ever seen Five Deadly Venoms? No, never heard of it. A Chinese kung fu movie? It's fucking bitching, dude. Got to check yeah. that movie out. It's like a I'm... Toho movie. Uh, so it's it's like that. Like the, the the first book was, I, I think, uh, Warriors meets like Train Spotting. Yeah. Second one was yeah. just more Warriors, right? Yeah, it uh, was very I mean, it, very Warriors. Loved it. It was so fun. Thank you. But also horrible. Sure. <laughs> it was very, very traumatizing. <laughs> yeah. um, you write you write in those books about um, you know uh, characters who have you know been abandoned. They're out on the streets. You know, the, I mean, they, they probably sleep in alleys. A lot of them. But uh, uh, and, and you know, with your your work with Children of the Night, I'm sure that you you've seen enough real life stories that that put those fictional stories to you know out to pasture right yeah i mean just like i everyone will tell an author it's like write what you know i know la dude it's a fucking dirty ass town where people are abandoned and they're left out on the street so that that's inspiration in a nutshell right <laughs> yeah that's right it's she Anne is Anne is pretty close to like out in Palm Springs. So yeah, I mean she she walks it every night, don't you, Anne? You're yeah, out there. I, and and I left LA right at the right time. Oh God, it's such a long story. Very very short story. Got attacked in my own apartment in Chicago. Fled Chicago for LA. Immediately caught typhus and almost died. Was hallucinating for like two months. Was thrown in a mental hospital because I seemed schizophrenic, and nobody gave a shit. The landlord whose filthy conditions almost killed me just was like, uh, you need to pay the rent. <laughs> yep. That's what LA is. LA is the fucking nightmare right now. Stay oh, God, I can't even imagine. Dude, I, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. The, the stuff that, get, that pops up in the Citizen app, like right next door to me. You know, weird, crazy story that I'm going to take you guys down right now. Uh, so... Over the summer, this past summer, um, we were all in COVID lockdown and shit, and we began smelling some fucking rancid shit next door to us. Like we thought maybe there was a dead animal under the house or something. Oh, so yeah, we, oh, I went into no. the I went into the crawl space, see if I could find any like dead animals or what it was, or maybe it was our garbage can and shit. After a month, we come to find out that the elderly incapacitated uh, father who lives next door to us in our duplex um, had passed away a month ago. And his fucking son, who's a meth addict, was living in the house with the fucking corpse in the family room oh my because God. the dad was incapacitated for a month. So oh we called God. the we, we got I got my landlord to get in there. She went in there. She said she oh. couldn't get very far because it's the smell of death was so bad. A month, oh. a month in the summer in LA. That's like oh. 90 degrees every day. So she comes back out and she's like, I, I can't go any further. And I'm like, I'm not going in there. I should have gone in there. Could have gotten some pics. So freaking they she called the cops. The cops come. The she thought that the kid killed himself too uh. and maybe he hung himself or something. So the cops come out and I go, that motherfucker's in there. I guarantee he's in there. So they went back in and he acted like he was like asleep and shit. And they came down, you know, you can, you know, you can't get arrested for not reporting a fucking dead body. And that motherfucker is still next door to me and has been, since August, because the cops can't do shit. And he killed his fucking dad. He killed him. 
killed or the, let die? Killed him. The, 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 the freaking nurses who were over there. Because he, he had like a stroke. We, we, he had this mysterious fall. And I, we think that the kid beat the shit out of his dad and fucked him up. So he couldn't walk anymore and he couldn't talk anymore. And so he was in the front room of their house, right, right next to there, where the nurses would come in and he had a bed in there. And the nurses were coming by. Nurse, he, he fired the nurses, the kid did, and they stopped coming around. And then a social worker came by and asked me, and he's like, have you seen the dad? Have you seen the kid? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I haven't seen shit. Thankfully, I got a picture of his card that he left on their door. And he's still there because of, because of the COVID uh, restrictions. They can't, my landlord can't boot him. He's not paying rent. He's, they, they, they froze any money he would have gotten from his parents. So he's just living there fucking in the middle of a freaking mess. Can you imagine how like the fucking biohazard I was living next door to? It was gnarly. And it's on, it, dude's still there. On that note, guys, I'm going to say good night from the UK. Thank Where you, Jasper. Thank you very much for coming. Great night. night. So much for having me. You added a lot to the conversation. Yeah. That's for sure. Well, thanks. Pleasure for the meeting you, man. Pleasure meeting you too. Look forward to a long, very, very fruitful relationship with all you guys. Good night. Good morning, good night. Wow, this is. This is, uh, I don't know, I think, I feel like you've given a lot of uh, misfit authors uh, uh, some hope. And, uh, you know, that's a powerful drug, uh, you know, once you get hooked on it, hope. Yeah. And, and, I, and I hope that they can, they can believe kind of my message and what I'm trying to do. You know, this isn't about fucking people over. This isn't about exploiting authors. You know, this is about helping people who are, you know, very talented get their work out further. It's about bringing the community together and amplification is, is the most important thing. I, I, know, I, I know I used the, uh, the word MCN earlier, which is a multi-channel network, which is a, a really shitty kind of business practice where it was these companies started – in like the early 2010s, like Machinima and Osmos TV, and I've worked for all of them. So what they did is they're like, okay, we're going to bring you into our network. We're going we're gonna to bring you brand deals and stuff like that, and we're going to promote you. But we're going to take over your freaking uh, YouTube account. It's like I'm not interested in doing any of that shit. I'm not taking any money out of anyone's pockets. I think that 10% is fair for like the work that I'm doing for people, right? Yeah. But, you know, I, I, I just want people to make more money and I want them to get the exposure they deserve. Someone like Simon McCarty should be a fucking rock star right now. Yeah, the, he, people, people are talking about Mother Maggot so much. <laughs> And he's in, he's got like he, he's got no way to push it out, you know. Even though it's not a mainstream uh, book, and he's not a mainstream guy, it's like he can get to them. Yeah. And and I think I can, I, you know, I think I can help. I want to help because I like him. And not just Simon, but I've I've noticed that the same names keep cropping up in association with each other. Uh, more and more that, that it does feel like a community beginning, you know, in its beginning stages. Uh, Aaron Beauregard, uh, BJ Swan, Daniel Volpe, um, you know, uh, uh, Nikki Noir. I see these names crop up over and over in relation to each other enough. And, and what they're doing is, you know, related in a way that, that feels really organic, you know, just like when Bizarro first started, how, you know, that, that seemed to happen organically with, you know, people's styles kind of, you know, being comparable, com comparable to each other, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, some of the more like, like the zebra paperback horror, how they yeah. were all related, you know, in, in the sort of style. Um, but they were, they also had their own, you know, quirks, you know, and I see that happening with this, with these names, you know, with Simon leading the pack, you know, so yeah, I, I, and I think that uh, 
Yeah, I'm glad that – who keeps – Regina's being ill. Okay, that, that was Gracie walking on the keyboard again. Sorry. Oh, Gracie. <laughs> ah. way, Gracie oh, trying to cancel me out here. Oh, look at that cat butt. Look at that cat butt. Did the footy butt. But, uh, oh, yeah. the footy butt. It's, uh, yeah, it, see, Mother Maggot had, was building a reputation – for Simon, and then it got taken off Amazon. Me personally, I couldn't finish it, but you know, I, I recognize <laughs> that that's a strength that he was able to gross me out to the point that I, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to come back to this some other time. You know. <laughs> well, at, at, at Godless's launch, I'm, I'm gonna have Buzz books, and obviously, there's no more buzzy book right now than that. And for like the past year, it, people talk about it constantly, and and I think that. That's a good thing. And someone like Simon should be able to reap the rewards from that, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, man, no, he's got some great off offerings coming uh, along down the pike. And so does Daniel. Um, he's got some interesting titles, too. And, of course, BJ has a whole collection of things that I think are going to be coming out over time. So I really feel like there is an increasing number of authors who are interested in using your platform. And I just, you know, see more and more authors who are interested in, you know, either extreme horror or, you know, just fringe fiction in general who I think really could use a home. So it's a great platform. It's really exciting. Thanks, Regina. And, and I think that's the purpose, right? I, you're speaking to exactly to what I want to do. It's like, this shit we know is hardcore. We understand it in the horror community, but a lot of people outside of the horror community don't understand it. That's why I'm doing stuff like uh, the, the featured author videos. You can, you can watch mine. It's on the Godless YouTube channel. Um, and I'm, I'm doing those for him. Like, I'm cutting them for him. I'm sending the authors like a, a list of questions that they have to answer. They send them back to me and I'll edit that shit. And then, like I said, I'm going to do like a, a bunch of different formats that are really accessible to different people, like, like react videos and horror authors reading each other's <laughs> works and stuff oh, like that. Cool. So it, it's just making something different, you know, making people look at the horror community a little different. You know, and that does that doesn't mean selling out. That means making content that's fun, and making content that's cool, and making content that's built around the author's work, right? I mean, I, I'd like to get Simon to eat a handful of maggots. <laughs> oh no! That would be one of the publicity stunt. That that's that. Uh, uh, I think I might here. have actually done that already. Man, I man, come on. <laughs> no, that I was wonder why it seems like something's always eating you up inside. <laughs> you know, I never I never had that millennial <laughs> instinct to whip my camera out at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> I uh, that, yeah, well, that was what put me off a of mother maggot was when the guy ate maggots out of an asshole and then he did he popped his finger in his mouth like like he was savoring the juices, or oh, yes. I, couldn't, I couldn't go any farther after that. Like I said, I'll get back to it someday. That's when I kind of just blur my eyes and power through. Simon, <laughs> let me read a couple of his he, his stories that are coming out soon, and there are some moments where it's like. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. That's just okay. Let's see what happens in the next paragraph. You know, <laughs> oh, no. he's, he's, he's got that right. He's he's got he's got he's got his hook. You know. Yeah. Let's see how <laughs> gross this fucking next thing can be. What about yeah? Martin? It's Aussie it's sickos. Fun. When's Aussie? Yeah, sickos? I'm so excited about Aussie sickos, dude. I cannot wait for that title. Can that I show? One... The, can I show the cover on here? Is that cool? Yeah. There was something of Regina's I meant to read besides her harem fiction, but I, fuck if I can remember what it was. Babysitter. Dottie. It had something to do with like the 60s, I think. The 60s. Wild girl running. Uh, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm just. Maybe, maybe it's just the typhus brain damage. I know there was something. I don't think it was that. 60s. 
I'm very excited for whatever you've got coming out next with Puppet Combo. So this I, is why we yeah, need man. a I blog for the show with a yeah, man. Yeah, we should have a log with discuss works, but yeah, I'm very you know excited. What, uh, for the next one of you ladies, wanna, if, if one yeah, as, soon, as soon yeah. as I get home, I'm gonna start a Google Google Doc. Like right now during the show, once I get home, I'm gonna start a Google Doc and just put things in it and make a backup of it every week in case somebody decides to vandalize it, and just give all of our listeners a link to the Google Doc. Cool. Here yeah, it is. I my good reads open why... while I'm listening to this. I yeah, know. Every time I hear something I think I'd be interested in, I just go and mark it on Goodreads. You gotta add it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. There's a lot of good shit out there. There's, I mean, there's so much good shit. I mean, like, pe some people are so jaded. They're like, oh, everything's been done. But, but I mean, no. It, authors have more freedom now than they ever have, you know, except for Amazon when they get censor happy, you know? Oh, 100%. I, you know, the stuff that we write today, like, no, it could never have it, 10 years ago. Yeah, no, absolutely not. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's right? a pretty awesome I cover, yeah. I love Doesn't that. that remind you cover. of something on like Cinemax at 3 a.m. when you were like 11 years old? It does it remind me of like... Oh, I mean, it oh. reminds me of like a death metal cover. I was going to say, it reminds me of the early death covers like Scream, Bloody Gore, and Leprosy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, I keep telling Simon that he's going to be like among the first of this community to be anointed by a movie, which, uh, you know, I hope comes true and isn't a curse on him because I really think that his books are like very cinematic and remind me of just all the really like hardcore, violent, uh, torture, snuff horror films that came out in, you know, the late 2000s, except now it's like, really like just incredibly extreme <laughs> but i think that's the interesting thing about having it in a literary format is that it's like you can't look away and experience the story in order to fully actually experience the story in any meaningful way you i mean it's like watching a film you blink but when you're reading words on a page you're being forced to like actually read the words if you really want to read the story so it's like it traps you with it. And I think that's why a lot of these extreme horror authors uh, are able to create such powerful works because they become just like so intense and so just like in the face of the reader. It's so inescapable, man. It's, it's, well, Regina, it's, that's the difference between like novel writing and screenwriting. Screenwriting is bullshit, dude. It's like fucking... <laughs> Seriously, it's like it's like taking a freaking an outline and just filling in the blanks. It's it's so lame. Yeah, but novelists and people who write books and short stories and uh, novellas and stuff, they have this opportunity to build like an entire fucker world, right? And they don't have to worry about the constraints of special effects. So I mean, it's it's such a it's it's so much more powerful. And it means so much more to me. You know, I'm my favorite book of all time is The Great and Secret Show. And I, yeah. I always, Hell want, yes. always always wanted to see it as a movie. But then you think about it and you're like, man, they're gonna fuck that up. You know? So I I, I I read it all the time. Like I return to it because I it just draws me in so hardcore. And, and Barker's got this way of doing that, but especially in that book, because that whole scene in the dead letter office isn't really scary or creepy or anything. It's just fucking engaging, right? And you can't capture that in a movie. Yeah, all those letters, yeah. like letters to Santa Claus, letters to God, and just how he, he that was the first clue of this metaphysical other world was down there in that in that office, yeah, with all these, you know, uh, letters uh, uh, that people wrote to non-existent entities, and and you know later on they kind of dream them up when uh, the barrier is crossed or something. It's yeah. been a long time, but it was very imaginative, as most of Barker's were too imaginative for the screen. Yeah, yeah. and they, they could never make Weave World either, right? Oh no, you know? I don't know. It's They're getting closer with with some of this stuff um, but Hellraiser has degenerated with each subsequent sequel uh, I think the last really good one would would have been Hellbound you know part two 
and and maybe part three up until CD Head. CD you know? Head was the worst character in fucking Hellraiser <laughs> franchise history, dude. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, yeah. you guys, no. I, th- I think I got a bounce. Okay. Hey, thank you well, so wait, much wait, for I coming one, on. One. Yeah, okay. thank you very much, Drew. I did thank have you. one one uh, author I wanted I wanted to recommend to you. Uh, before you go, and it, you've probably heard of him, but Chandler Morrison. Yep, I he's think on that, there. Oh, he is. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, fit right I in. Would recom- I'd recommend uh, Matthew Stoko. I haven't heard of Matthew Stoko. Oh yeah, he wrote yeah he's uh, wrote cows. He, he's been around. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'd yeah, awesome. recommend him, uh, especially since his work is uh, self-published now, so it's all in his hands. So when is uh, I mean, so Knuckler is in what like first draft uh, cooling off in a drawer somewhere not written at all or what? <laughs> no, it's written, okay. kinda. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've got I've got the basics together. I just need to fucking sit down and quit fucking getting distracted by things like launching horror platforms and novelette series mm-hmm. for twenty five cents and satanic diet books. And whatever other dumb shit I'm going to dream up on my walks. So, I, trust me, I, it's coming. I, I, I just want to close by saying, and, and I'll let you talk too, Ben. Don't worry. But uh, I, I did want. I just wanted to say that uh, when I found out that you were heading up this, you know, and I was already familiar with your, you know, Knuckle series, uh, uh, I felt like, man, that's just the guy to step up and, and handle this for, you know, for you know, uh, less experienced authors, you know, so. I'm proud to have uh, already uh, read your stuff before. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, Jeremy. We need, so, we need, uh, we need, well, oh, really quick, we, we need to talk about how we can do this as weekly on the Godless YouTube channel. So okay. hit me up definitely when you guys are done tonight. Yes. It'll be very fun. Cool. Awesome. So uh, godless.com launches on the 15th, you said? Launches on the 15th. Um, I probably I'm gonna try and launch it on midnight, uh, you know, between the 14th and the 15th. But I'm not absolutely positive I can do it. Uh, I've, I've still got a shitload of work to do. Like I said, I I have like to put up like uh, all the uh, non-partner publisher titles, and those are those are some deep ass catalogs, you know. So, and obviously, and you guys, any of you guys, anyone you know who's an author who might be struggling or maybe not struggling or looking for a way to release their work or looking for a way to release their more edgy work or shit that they just want to sell short stories for like 25 cents, have them hit me up and then we'll go from there. I appreciate everything you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Really great thing. Thank you for, for being that 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 kind of hope, you know, Right. Thanks, so keep guys. an eye out for guideless.com on the 15th. Thank you so much for coming, Drew. Word up. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Just the side of the window. When, <laughs> there so, you go. Yeah. Jeremy. Uh, well, that was a great conversation. That yeah, that was. Yeah. What do you think, Definitely. Andy? Do you think you'd be at home uh, working with uh, Godless? Or? Oh, was that directed at me? Well, yes. Uh, yeah, I was just about to ask if 